Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now this episode's going to be a little bit different than usual. I'm actually going to be talking about C, not C++. And this is kind of to point out something that we are used to doing in C++ that really just isn't possible in C. And I'm going to have to demonstrate a couple of different things here. So I've got right now a C source file open in the Compiler Explorer web interface. I'm going to go ahead and add a second source file that is C++. Okay, I think this should do it. I've got my assembly output and my compiler outputs for my two different compilers here. I can just try to line things up just a little bit better. Just our fonts. Okay, so I have both compilers set up with O3, WAL, WExtra, WPedantic, and I, we can see straight away that we are getting a warning from our C compiler that ISO C forbids an empty translation unit. This isn't a problem in C++, but that's all right. So I'm going to demonstrate just a simple area for a circle function. And I think I think I have that right. No, that's pi r squared, not r pi squared. Okay, so the first thing that we should notice is this right here. This is the demangled name of our function. This is showing us the type signature of it, and this is area, and it takes a double. Now, the return type actually isn't in this name in the symbol table. So let's go ahead and do something similar in our C compiler. Now notice we have an area function in our C compiled output, but it doesn't have any type signature with it. That is because the type and number of parameters are not actually part of the C calling conventions. Well, it has to be in the C calling convention, but it's not something that's actually saved in our symbol table here. And, and we can kind of see this if we were to do this extern C. We are telling the compiler this function should have C linkage. That's what this does in our C++ world. And you can see here again, we've lost the type information from our C++ version of it. So going back to this version and the two different things, if you are kind of following along at home, you might think, well, how does function overloading work in the C world. And let's see if we do an area, then we're going to get this conflicting types for area previous definition here. If you're coming from C++ and you have never programmed in C, this is going to be very surprising to you. In C++, this is trivial. We can have multiple versions of the same function. We can easily see uh, that we've got an area, a uh, excuse me, a double area, a float area. We can do a long double version. long double like this, no big deal. These things all work in C++ and if we care, we can scroll through and look at the, the um, different implementations of these in the disassembly. So what is one to do if you are in the C code region? And basically you have to do this. You have to give each function a different name and you actually see this throughout the standard library for C where they've got multiple versions of these functions and well they're not going to put const in their functions and signature but they're going to give them each a different name area area F 
area L, and you know which one of these responds to the uh, corresponds to the double float long double versions. Well, at a certain point, this is a lot to manage. So the C11 standard, yes, that is right. C was updated in 2011, and it has continued to be updated along the way, and it has many other features such as thread local variables like we have in C11. Well, they added the ability to actually kind of merge these overloads into one thing in C11. And the syntax, well, it's kind of goofy. It needs um, preprocessor help, and it uses this underscore generic keyword. And it's things that, you know, uh, well, from the C++ world, we're not terribly used to. So I'm going to go grab the code that looks like this and show you what it looks like. So this is basically what we are looking at in C11. We do this pound define and we're declaring a function called area and uh, well, but it's a preprocessor macro and it is a generic function that takes the single parameter X and if X is a long double, then it calls area L. If it's whatever the default would be, then it calls the area version, which seems a little uh, surprising to me that this is how it works because we've got area calling area and well here's one that I just kind of stubbed in like what if we wanted some other overload I'll go ahead and remove that and we've got our float so we've got our long double our default and our float and now if we were to call this function like this and we wanted to return the area of arg c first of all i expect this is going to call the double version because that is the default but if we wanted it to call the float version then we could do this and if we really want to dig into this assembly output here we can actually see that this version changes depending on what kind of cast we do here. Now we are in C, remember, so we can't do a static cast. We have to do the C style cast, but we can see the implement cha implementation changes depending on how we cast argc in, and then it's going to call a different version. And if by any chance you happen to be actually doing this in C++, you may be aware that the implementation of each of these things is exactly the same, which does give us the opportunity in C++ Now we can simply define this as a template function, and this really templates in C++ are kind of the ultimate of uh, don't repeat yourself and I, I really I know this this video is more about function overloading in C than it is C++ but I really can't just leave this hanging here I do have to show that we can do this as a template in C++ and in C++ 20 we'll have other things available to us such as concepts and auto here so just something to keep in mind but moving back to the C version yes it is actually possible to do function overloading now in C that was added in C11 so uh, if you're in the C world um, be aware of this and thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly